In this video, we're going to set up an EM simulation for a microstrip stub resonator um, by laying out our geometry by hand, by drawing it, as opposed to using the extract feature that we showed in a previous video. So one thing to get used to with Microwave Office is that there are many ways to do the same thing. And there are many ways to generate an EM structure. And so in this video, again, we're going to be showing how to generate an EM structure that I'm calling by hand, by basically drawing out, drawing the layout. So I've opened up a new project here. First thing I'm going to do is go to Tools, no, Options, Project Options. Let's just, we know the frequency right now, so we're going to simulate this from 1 to 2 gigahertz. So let's just put this in now, for steps of 0 0.001. Hit apply. Let's go to global units and change our length to inches. Hit OK. All right, so next thing is, let's go to global definitions. Click here on the left, and just click right there. Now within our global definitions, we're going to create a stack up. So down here to elements, click on the tab, go to circuit elements, go down to substrates, click on that icon, and then down here should be stack up. There it is. So move the stack up icon there. Double click on the stack up, and this is how we're going to define our substrate. So let's now, it's saying, define your dielectric. So we add and we'll call this dielectric 1, for lack of a better name. Epsilon R is 1.96 and the loss tangent, let's say, is point zero point zero zero one. And we can hit OK. Conductor add. We will look at the presets and just choose copper. It's going to be copper. Everything else looks good. Dielectric layer, we're going to insert a layer. Layer 1, you can see, is highlighted in red. That's going to be air. We're going to make this thing like 3 inches, something like that. Dielectric 2, layer 2, is going to be the microstrip substrate. So this is going to be 0 0.05 inches thick. And material definition, click here to dielectric 1. That's what we created in the Material Definitions tab. Now down here, we want our bottom boundary to be copper, and we could choose our top boundary to be an approximate open, and our side boundary, let's choose approximate open. Moving now to the right, so we click here up Materials tab, that looks correct. EM layer mapping, let's go here, copper, EM layer two, let's change the material to, Oh, actually, no. We're going to go back to materials. That's not fine. We're going to insert a new material. Trace one. The thickness will be 0 0.000138. I think that corresponds to one ounce copper. Material definition will be copper. And we can delete this other thing there. So we have now this name is trace one, which is our copper trace. Now go to EM layer mapping. And in this material, choose trace one for copper. For line type, I insert here from at the right. And let's change material to trace one. And then we have this one that says default. Let's just delete that. So line one, trace one, that's copper. That looks correct. Parameters, display, all the rest I think looks correct. So that is our stack up that defines our substrate now let's go back here to project at the bottom left tab let's go to em structures because we're going to create an em structure right click and then click on new em structure there's a bunch of different simulators i'm going to do the axiom planar 3d method of moments asynchronous simulator that looks good now our initialization options, we now need to define our substrate or tell the EM simulator or the EM the new EM structure what substrate we want. And so we have already created the stack up. So it's already in global definition. Sub one is what we called it from stack up. That's how we're initializing it. Create. 
now we've just created um, a blank canvas for us to basically draw in our EM structure. So here on the left, you can see there's structure one, etc. Okay, let's go to EM structures options. Up here, click on the tab that says Axiom, and this is what we want, Advanced Frequency Sweep. So let's keep that thing on. We can leave everything else the same. See, if you were choosing EM Site, then you would have these options. But since we're doing Axiom, these options on the EM Site tab don't apply to us. Okay. Let's now, let's see. Okay, we've already done that. Yes. So back to this. So EM structure, click on, so it says EM structure one, right click, click on options. And just to make sure I click on this box that says use project defaults for the frequency. So if we change the frequency up here in the project default or, or in the project, it will change it in the EM simulation. I just personally like to do that. Hit okay. And then I'm gonna double click on enclosure. And here's where we can set our grid spacing for our layout. So not only is this grid for our layout that we're going to draw, but it's also the grid for our EM simulation itself. So for now, let's just change our grid to 0 0.001. We're actually going to change that again after we draw the structure. So both grid X, grid Y are 0 0.001 in the enclosure tab. Okay. And I think we're ready to draw our structure now. So let's go down to here. We see rectangle. Let's click on that. And then we're going to draw a rectangle. So you can kind of drag and drop if you want. And draw rectangles like that. I'm going to delete. What we're going to do is click on rectangle. Click once. And you can see that I'm holding the mouse. So I'm kind of dragging that rectangle around. I'm not letting go. And I hit space. And now I can actually enter in the dimensions of this rectangle. So this one is going to be 0.4 inches in the x direction and the width, which is the y direction, is 0.166. So this should be about 50 ohms. Okay, zoom out. There's our rectangle. I'm not going to, I'm going to click on it, right click, and then click on shape properties. And I check to make sure that it is indeed copper. So this is trace one, what we defined in our um, material definitions for our stack up. Okay, click on this, hit Control C to copy and Control V to paste. We're going to have another one on that side. And now I'm going to put a little square between these things. So again, I go to rectangle, click, space. This square is going to be 0.166 by 0.166 inches. Hit OK. And this is going to fit right between these two things. So I'm going to move this square kind of like that. Move this one like that. And you could always zoom in to make sure everything's connected. Okay, so this is going to be where port one is. This is going to be where port two is on the right. So left is port one, right is port two, and then there's going to be a stub sticking out there. So I'm going to take, click on this rectangle. Click somewhere, you can move it around, hit space. And then the X direction is going to be our width, 0.166. And our Y, I'm choosing a length that resonates around 1.5 gigahertz. Not exactly, but close enough. So 1.4 inches that I calculated using the transmission line calculator. And there's our stub, and we're going to put that right there. And let me zoom in, make sure it looks, nope. Looks good. Okay, so that's our basic layout. Now I want to add ports. So I click on this left rectangle here, and I'm going to go up here the bot or the top right and hit edge port and click there. Then I click on this right rectangle and then go up here, find edge port again, and click there. Now I'm going to double click on the first edge port, and it says explicit ground reference. Let's go to connect to lower and leave everything else the same. This will be our excitation port line. And then we'll cl double click on port two and then go to connect to lower and leave everything else the same. 
Now let's see how this thing would mesh if we ran a simulation right now. So I'm going to go up here to show 2D mesh. Might take a while. And this thing is meshing like crazy. So I look at this and go, whoa, 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 that's, there's no need to mesh this fine, this finely. If you have a fine mesh like this, it's going to take forever to simulate and you probably won't even get much better accurate results. So now we're going to go back to enclosure on the left, double click, and I'm going to change the grid to 0.2. Hit OK. <clears throat> and now I'm going to hit show, D, show 2D mesh again on the top right. <clears throat> now you can see that the mesh is not so dense anymore. And to me, just kind of eyeballing it, this looks like a good mesh size. It's still dividing up the geometry, you know, with enough resolution, if you will, but it's not too crazy, so it's, the simulation is going to take forever. So let's just leave it at that. All right, and next, before you simulate, um, I generally recommend going to graphs, create new graphs, and we're going to do a rectangular graph, and I, I recommend creating a new measurement. So within this graph, I'm going to right-click, go add new measurement. The data source name is going to be EM structure one and we're going to plot magnitude db of s11 hit apply and we want s21 hit so press this up arrow for s21 leave everything else the same hit apply and it's kind of grayed out because it hasn't simulated yet i think this looks good let's hope and i'll hit analyze and it should take maybe half a minute I'm enjoying some nice hot chocolate while this thing simulates. Looks like something's happening. you can see how the solution is starting to take shape. So even though we have a 1,001 grid points, by turning on AFS, that feature, it's only going to simulate as many as it needs to create an accurate solution. So we don't have to wait for this thing to simulate 1,001 iterations. And it's done. Nope. Trick me. Are you done? I think you're done. So it took a couple of minutes. Interesting, because I did this before and it only took about 30 seconds. And it gives the responses kind of what we expect. It has, here's S21, and there's a big notch there at the resonant frequency. Okay, so that's really the basics of how you set up an EM simulation and run it. But we're going to go just a little bit further here and show how to incorporate this EM simulation into a circuit schematic. It's really easy. So here on the left, we have circuit schematics. Right click, click on new schematic. We'll just call it schematic one. Up here you see sub, sub circuit. Click on that 
and because we haven't done different EM structures, there's just kind of one there. So this is what we want. EM structure one, there's two ports, and it's just type EM structure grounding normal. So our EM structure is right here in the sub-circuit. Basically, the program, I'm assuming, simulates the circuit, finds the S parameters. Once you have the S parameters, that means you have the A, B, C, D parameters, the impedance, Y parameters, etc. And this box is basically just a set of data points at each frequency. So let's now connect ports to this. Control R. Now we're going to simulate this and it <clears throat> should hopefully give the same response we got from the EM simulation. There's no reason it wouldn't. So your graphs, click on new graph, rectangular, right click, add new measurement. And now our source is not going to be the EM structure itself, but schematic one. I'll hit apply for S21 and then change this to S11, hit apply and hit analyze. And sure enough, it gives us the exact same response as the EM simulation. So this is graph two. This is the simulated response or the measurement from our schematic itself. So here's what's great about it. What if you wanted to cascade these blocks? So one, two, three. So you would have three different stubs, say. This is you're just having fun. Instead of actually making a new EM simulation that contains three stubs that would take forever to simulate, this thing is going to do it um, this way by just having these sub circuits. It loses a little bit of accuracy, but now if I simulate it, it takes no time at all. So this is presumably what the response would be for three stubs. And then you can even add lumped element components. So down here I go to elements, I click on where am I? Let's say lumped element, and let's say I want a resistor. Here's a closed, even a closed form resistor I can incorporate here. So rotate it. I don't know, I'll put the resistor here, and then I'll put it to ground. And let's make the resistance 10 ohms, I don't know. All right, click back here, I'm gonna hit analyze. And you can see it kind of changes the response. So that's how you can incorporate EM simulations into your schematic, basically through this sub-circuit block here. And finally, let's see, let's uh, see if we can actually see the currents um, in the layout. So I'm going to go here, bottom projects. Let's look again at the graph. So I want to see, this is like an interesting region right here of the curve, right? At around 1590 megahertz is when this thing is resonating. And I want to know what do the currents look like at this frequency? Now you can't just view the currents at any old frequency when you use this um, automate, when you use AFS. Um, let's go back to explain what I'm talking about. So here's EM structure, right click options. That's actually not what I want. Enclosure, double click. Nope, where is it? Try this thing here. Okay, so here's what I did. EM structure one, I right clicked, clicked on options, and then clicked on the Axiom tab. Advanced frequency sweep, AFS, means it's not going to simulate at every frequency that you stipulated in the project options. It's only going to simulate at maybe eight or nine frequencies. So you can't view the current at any frequency that you desire. You'd only be able to view it at the frequencies that it chose for you. So what I do, and I want to view a frequency, is I'm going to click off AFS. Hit OK. And look back, that's graph two for the schematic. Go back to graph one. All the interesting stuff happens at 1590 or around 1590. So I'm going to go up here to Options, Project Options, and let's just view it at, say, 1.58 to 1.6 gigahertz with steps of 0.01. Hit Apply. 
So we're going to simulate only at these very specific frequencies and hit OK. That's the first thing. And this might take me, I have to always remember this. So I'm going to click on, now there's EM Structures 1. I'm going to click on this and right click on EM Structure 1, click on Option. That's good. It has three frequencies selected. I'm going to click on the General tab and go Save Results and Document. Let's click on Currents. Okay, we can ignore circuit schematics. Let me double click on that. So here's our layout again. And let's run the simulation. So we'll go click on this graph and we'll just run the simulation again. So now it's only going to simulate for those three specific frequencies right here at resonance. So we got one frequency, second. And the third. Move this over there. What is that? What does the current look like at this frequency, the lowest point at 1590 megahertz? So to do that, I'm going to click here at the left on EM structure one again. I am going to click on. There's many ways of doing it. I'll click on EM annotation at the upper right. I want to see EM current, and then so I click here for measurement at current, and then down here it says sweep frequency. So I'm going to select the frequency I'm interested in. I'm, in, I'm interested in 1590 megahertz. I'm hit apply, hit OK. And if I hit this view EM in 3D, it shows the current. It shows the direction with the green arrow and the magnitude by this um, color plot here. So red means the magnitude is stronger at that region. So here's the current, and then I'm going to actually animate it. So up here in the top right, I hit animate. So one thing I notice is that the, str the current is strong at port 1, and there's almost nothing in port 2. But beyond that, you can see that there's a standing wave that's developed in this line. So at the end, this is an open, so the current should be 0, which it is, more or less. And then you can see that the current is strongest right here, which is indicating of the fact that the stub looks like a short from right from this point here looking in. Looks like a short, the current is maximum, and you can see the standing wave. The current is maximum here in this region where my cursor is, then gradually goes down, and then zero like that. If these green arrows annoy you, you can go back here at the left, click on this struct, click on EM structure one. This icon here is our current measurement. Double click on that, and then click on show current directions and hit OK, and then those arrows go away. And now you're just looking at a plot of just the magnitude. If that helps. If you want to look at a different frequency, we double click again on this current icon. And then you can say, well, what does it look like at 1600 megahertz? And I expect it to look pretty similar because the frequencies are similar. And I just animated it again. All right, so this video has covered the basics of how to set up an EM simulation in Microwave Office by laying out the structure by hand. And then we discussed how to incorporate your simulation in a schematic. And then we also discussed how to view the current that are flowing on the structure.